and welcome. We are delighted that you have joined us today in worship and we look forward to a not only a beautiful day but a day in which we can rejoice in the Lord. Just want to call our attention to a couple of announcements. Uh, obviously you know that we have made a little change as far as the presentation of worship this morning. Uh, the band as well as the pastoral leadership we are inside and we felt that we could communicate a little bit better with you if we were inside. Now if you have some concerns about this, please let us know because we are we haven't perfected this process, but we're working on it. So I just want to call your attention to a couple of announcements. Uh, please pay attention if you're interested in live streaming or someone else in your family. Uh, the process by which that can, that's taken place uh, is, uh, is printed in our order of service this morning. If you have further questions, you can talk to Brother Chris Jackson, and he can help you as well. Now, we uh, need volunteers to help us with the virtual uh, schoolwork, and what we are doing here at the church is that we're going to be providing space for students who need additional internet service. And so uh, if you are willing to volunteer to help just, just, just be a mentor or a prop to help with this process, please see Brother Chris, and, and he will give us further instructions about that as well. And then again, we are Zooming and also placing our order of service on Facebook and on Zoom. And uh, if you need more information about that, you can uh, contact the church. And then on Wednesday evening, the Sunday school will be at 7 p.m. Now, friends, it is our goal to try to put, have everybody back in worship on September the 13th. Now, we don't know if this is going to happen or not, but it's our goal. The team has been working to make this happen. We're going to have to be very, very astute and alert and also follow the instructions that the leadership of the team will be providing for us to be able to accomplish what we hope that we'll be able to do. And if you have further concerns or questions about this, Please see us. Now, uh, we want to know, too, how this worship service today with the staff and the well as the uh, band being inside and you on the outside. I know you can't see us face to face, but we're certainly trying to communicate with you by virtue of your radio and the speakers as well. If you have concerns about that, uh, let us know, and we'll try to do our very best to accommodate uh, everyone, and that's what we're trying to do. Now, friends, 
where we're here today to worship and we thank God that you're here and let's join together as we worship together. Good morning, church. Good morning. Call to worship. Life can be sometimes very difficult. We look around and wonder where God is. In the midst of our trials and tribulations, God is with us. God surrounds us with love and courage. Let us come praise God, for God abides presence. Lord, thank you for always being with us, even when we don't recognize your love and presence. Amen. Amen. Uh, as Pastor said, I do want to say a couple more words about our attempts to, um, to help out our students during this time when they are um, about to start back with virtual learning. Um, I know uh, there's a lot of... Um, trepidation about that there's a lot of anxiety about it we don't know how it's going to go um, i've talked to some teachers and and uh they feel that too i've talked to administrative staff and they feel that too and so you're not alone parents and students um but we want to do what we can to help and so we are providing the church as a space where children can come and do their schoolwork um you'll need to provide your own device um, you can use the one the school provides or your own from home. Um, but you'll be able to come in, have a classroom space to yourself and um, a quiet space where you can work and have good internet connectivity that you don't have to worry about dropping out during the day if that's a concern where you live. And so um, if you need help with that and uh, you'd like to find out more about it, um, if that's you or maybe a neighbor who you know needs help, uh, in this regard, if you'll have them get in touch with the church, we do have an application to fill out. And as Pastor mentioned, we, we also are looking for some volunteers to help us monitor the hallways and just make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but we're excited that, that God has provided us the opportunity to bless the community in this way. Um, and so, again, if you need that or know another student who does, get in touch with the church office and we'll do what we can to help you. Um, with that said, we are here to worship the Lord this morning and so I invite you to look in your service order. You'll find the lyrics there for Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, which is our opening hymn today. Let us lift our voices and sing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army he shall And Christ his Lord indeed Stand up, stand up for Jesus The trumpet call obey Forth to the mighty conflict In this his glorious day Ye that are brave now serve him Against unnumbered foes Let courage rise with danger And strength to strength oppose Stand up, stand up for Jesus Stand in His strength alone The arm of flesh will fail you Ye dare not trust your own Put on the gospel armor Each piece put on with prayer Where duty calls or danger 
Stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. To those who vanquish evil, a crown of life shall be, and they King of glory shall reign eternally. Amen. If we stand with the Lord, we will receive that crown of righteousness, that crown of glory. And not only that, we know that we will be blessed in this life as well. And we have been blessed in this life. I know you have testimonies of what God has done for you before. We don't come to this place looking for something new. Um, a God who helps us as if he has not done that in the past. God has been with us and God will be with us. And so we can say today, amen, amen. Amen. This life is a journey we walk by faith And there will always be the mountains in our way but right here in this moment, may our strength be renewed. As we recall what God has done and how we've seen him move. If there's anybody here who's found him faith, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, say amen. Is there anybody? Anybody here found joy in the middle of sorrow? Just say amen. Sometimes through the darkness, it's hard to see. So just be brave and follow where he leads. Because greater is the one who's in us, amen, than he who's in the world. So child of God, remember the battle is the Lord. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. And if there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, say amen. Anybody here found joy in the middle of peace in your story, in your storm and hope for tomorrow? You see, you've seen it time and time again. Just say amen. Cause even in the valley of the shadow, when you feel all alone in the unknown, just say amen. Just say amen. The storms are raging. Just standing, no, you're not forsaken. Just say amen. Just say amen. Is there anybody here? Tell me, is there anybody here? Come on and say amen. 
there's anybody here who's seen his power anybody here brought through the fire come on and say amen anybody here found joy in the middle of sorrow peace in your storm and hope for tomorrow you've seen it time and time again just say amen, just say amen, come on and say amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I serve a God who has brought me through the fire. I serve a God who has been faithful. I serve a God who has brought me from where I was to where I am. I serve a God who is here ready to do the same again today. As I said, we don't testify about things we don't know. We testify about a God who we do know, a God who comes down to us where we are, a God who finds us in the bottom of the miry pit and lifts us up on a rock to stand firm today. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be fearful. We don't have to shrink from adversity. We serve a God who today is able to do more than we could even ask or think. And we, we can celebrate that today. We can come with boldness today. We can step out to do God's will, knowing that anywhere he leads us to go, he's already made a path. He has already gone before us. God does not take us further than his grace has already gone to prepare the way for us today. And as we come this morning to hear God's word again, we know that it is the bread of life for us. And it is what gives us strength. So will you join me now in our prayer for illumination as we prepare to hear God's word spoken again today. Loving God, we come today seeking rest. We come seeking peace. We come seeking hope. Yet as we open your word, we feel challenged, shaken, disciplined, refined by the words that you speak to us. Help us to receive that word today, knowing that it's through the path of suffering and service that we, like your son, find the peace and rest and hope and joy that we so desperately need today. In the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris, and thank you, Ben, and thank you for being here this morning. Uh, I'm going to invite you to turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. You know, for the past uh, weeks, we've been talking about faith. And the reason I have placed this emphasis so consistently and strongly on the, the issue of faith, friends, is to help us to understand that when we trust God, he is going to see us through. And Paul addresses this whole issue of how we live together as a community with the many gifts that God has given to each and every one of us. And we all have gifts that can be used for the building and the enhancement uh, of the kingdom. So here are these words taken from Romans 12 verses 9 through 21. It says, love, uh, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in the spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. 
contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who, are pers who persecute you, bless and do not uh, curse them, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not pay anyone evil for evil, but uh, take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. And if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but... Uh, leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will reap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil by doing good. Friends, this is God's word for us, and we thank him for his word. Lord, thank you that we're able to be in this place of worship this morning. And thank you for the opportunity to share in a community of faith, because there are so many other, Lord, in places around this world, and even in our own community, who have not and do not understand what it means to be in fellowship with brothers and sisters. And so we thank you for this, and we offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Now, friends, I can't see you in the car, but I would uh, certainly would appreciate a blow once in a while if I'm saying something or we're being encouraged together. So I'll know that you're out there. Amen. <laughs> That is good. And so uh, I just want to say to you, good morning. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> in our previous messages, I have pointed out over and over again that there are actually two different pandemics that we are having to struggle with. The one is the physical pandemic of COVID-19, and the other pandemic is a spiritual one. One that we need to get to come to terms with. And we want to continue to not only deal with this pandemic that we're having to face and pray for those who are being impacted by it, but also to trust the Lord that we're going to be healthier as a result of this. Now, one of the things I want to point out this morning and to make it very clear, and that is this. Friends, when we get into a rut or we're having to deal with certain things over and over again and again, we become emotionally drained. We feel that there is little or no hope for us. And we begin to look at ourselves and we look at the circumstances and we feel as if there's no place to turn. Well, I want to share with you this morning that there is a place to turn. There is a place that we can find hope and that hope is in Jesus Christ. Now, considering uh, the stress and the disruption that we are dealing with, I believe God is shouting out to us to get our attention. And the question is, are we listening to what he is saying to us? Now, I believe we need a faith that works for us to get us through what we are dealing with. And the challenge for us today and the day to come is to keep our focus on what will endure the ups and the downs that we are having to face each and every day. Now, I believe when we put our trust and put Christ at the center of our lives, we will create, and you need to hear this, a balance by learning and living out the principles that are 
clearly articulated in God's word. Uh, it all starts by building our lives around Christ Jesus. Now, when we get in a rut, when we have things that's falling in on us, and we and emotionally we are drained, we get frustrated, and we don't have anything to turn to. Listen, we need to remember that God is still with us. He has not forsaken us. Tell Jesus about it. Strive for the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says in his righteousness. And all of these things will be given to us. Now what does all of these things look like? What are all of these things that uh, uh, Jesus is talking about? Well that's what this sermon is about this morning. What we need, we need to find Christ anew. Friends, that's what Paul was talking about when he addressed the church at Rome. How do we do that? Well, it starts by building our lives around Christ anew. Now, friends, we need to do that every day of our lives. And I'm going to be talking about specific ways in which we can do that. We can do it as a community of faith. We are challenged to put him at the center of our lives. And he will teach us, if we do that, how to balance our lives. Now, Paul was writing to the Christians who were members of a local church in Rome. Now, he describes their relationship to each other in terms of saying, you are a member of the body of Christ. And he used this same picture in 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, and also in other scriptures. The basic notion and concept that he is trying to teach believers is that we cannot live apart as the body of Christ. That's why we worship. That's why we are here today. Even though you may be sitting in your car in a parking lot, we're not able to come together as we have would like to, but still, friends, we are the body of Christ. And we thank God. For and you know what else Paul says in this scripture? Each and every one of us, we have a gift to share. And listen, are you sharing the gift that God has given to you, you have many of them. We have them as the body of Christ. And this morning, I am inviting you to think of your life as a will. Now, think, go with me for a few moments. At the center of the will is the hub. And uh, out of the hub uh, are all of the spokes of life which represent our relationships with family, with career, with finances, with dreams and goals and every other area in our, in our lives. Uh, I want to ask you, what does your life re revolve around right now? Whatever you think about the most is what you are thinking most about and what your life revolves around. And if you have a solid center, you're going to have a solid faith. But if you have got a flimsy, weak center, you're going to have cracks in your edges. That's in our walk with Jesus Christ. You're not going to be as effective as you would like to be. And then as a result of that, it gives room for the enemy to come in. And you know what happens? He begins to pull us down and pull us away from our faith walk. Have you heard the, ex the expression before? I feel like I am coming unglued. Well, friends, if you are, then, hey, join the crowd. We all feel that way, especially in this pandemic and what we're having to deal with. We all feel like we're, we've lost it. We, don't, we, can't, we can't find our center. We are constantly waiting and anticipating for something new to happen. Well, I got good news for us this morning. Friends, one of the ways in which we hold it all together is by being the body of Christ, coming together and working 
worshiping and giving God the glory. And when we do that, he promised us he is going to take care of us and he is going to lead us no matter what we face. You know, it means that God is first in our lives. Whatever it is that is pulling you away and causing you to lose focus this morning and saying, well, I just don't want to have to go and sit in the parking lot. I can't talk to people. But listen, that's not what is important, friends. What is important is that you are seeking to be an active member and participant in the body of Christ. And sometimes, friends, it means for a while we will have to to sit in our cars and listen to the word of God. And we can give God the thanks and the glory for that. I know it has an emotional and an emotional toil on all of us. You know, let me ask you another question. What is at the core of your life? And whatever is there is going to be what's going to provide power for you to endure. But listen, power always emanates from the hub of those things around us. And if you don't, listen, if you don't have Christ at the center of your life, you know what? You've got a power shortage. You're not going to be able to do what you would like to do. Nothing else has enough power in this time with all of the ups and downs and the, you know, all of the things we're having to deal with that is going to sustain you through all of the unforeseen crisis that invariably is going to take place. We've got to have something. So what is holding you together? If it's not Christ, then friends, no wonder the church is not as effective as it ought to be. No wonder people are not coming to church. Why? Because their hub and their spokes is reaching out to the world rather than to Christ Jesus. And as the church, friends, our obligation is to honor him and praise him when we have an opportunity to do such a thing. Paul reminds the believers at the church in Rome that Christian fellowship is much more than a pat on the back or a handshake. It means, sh listen, it means sharing the burdens of other believers and blessing others so that we all will do one thing, grow together to glorify the Lord. If Christians cannot get along with one another, how can they, we ever be able to deal with the enemy out there? You know, he's going to beat us down. Is that the reason? Listen, I'm not blaming anybody because I've got a child, too, as well, that needs Jesus in his life. Is that the reason so many of our children are doing what they are doing simply because we are not emulating the love of Jesus Christ in our lives, in our homes, in our community? And as a result of that, they say nobody else cares for us. Why should I be a part of such a thing? We need to get it straight, friends. And when we get it straight, God is going to be with us. Now, today, I want us to look at a faith uh, that leads and helps us deal and, and to come to strength in our emotional health. A faith that enables us to live with other believers described by Jesus in the New Testament. We are to love, the Bible says, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Now, in the book of James, and we've been talking about the this whole series, we've uh, been given many valuable and practical principles of how and so we might just want to call them
point out a couple of things. You know, everyone have the same level of stress. We need to remember that. We all have different levels of stress in our lives. Everybody does not respond to stress in the same way. And I'm sure you've heard of people uh, saying probably many times during this whole pandemic that, that we're having to deal with that, you know, that we're all in the same boat. Well, listen, I want to share with you that's not the case. Some of us is riding in a yacht. Huh? We've got it all. Nothing can, can bother us. You know, we're just sailing along. It's just another thing, another bump in the road that we're having to deal with. We, you know, our jobs are not being threatened. Our, our, our health is not maybe threatened, but we're able to, uh, to provide a means by which we can uh, deal with the pandemic. You know, we're not all in the same boat. We, are, we Listen, we may all be in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat. And some people are just sailing around doing what they want to do. They have everything that they, as if nothing else is happening. And you know what's happening? They're just going on with their life. They're ignoring God. They're ignoring the church. They're just saying, yeah, when is it going to come to an end so I can just pick up and do the things that I've always done? Well, friends, I want to share with you. You've got a brother and you've got a sister. You've got somebody in the community who needs a hand who needs somebody to reach out to them, somebody to pray for them, somebody to care for what they are having to deal with. And you know what? You know who's going to do it? It's going to be the church. And if the church doesn't do it, it will not get done. And we've got to change, even though things may be difficult for us. But friends, listen. Do you believe the word of God? Did not Jesus tell us that he's going to take care of us? It doesn't mean you get out there and you be stupid. You know, yeah, you need to wear a mask. You need to be careful. And you've got to do all the things that science and health tells us to do. And if we, if we do that, even in tough times, God is going to be with us. And you know what? You'll be able to help somebody paddle their little canoe. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, you know, I don't, you know, I love, I, I love a boat. Don't have one, can't afford one. And the truth of the matter is I don't want one. But I tell you one thing, if I was in a storm in the middle of a lake, I'd want a boat or somebody, or somebody to get off the shore and come and help me. <laughs> And so that's what we, we, we've just got to do. We've got to look at it from a different perspective. So we're all, listen, we're, we're all in different boats, but we're in the same storm. And the storm, friend, is this pandemic. Some of us may be having with our family. We may be, ha they may be having health issues and other things may be going on, but there's a storm. Now, each of us, you know, came into this crisis at different emotional levels. And, you know, some of us thought, well, I can just handle this. I can get through it. Nothing is going to happen. Well, you're, and now it's been going on for such a long time. We have used up all of our emotional reserve. We don't have anything. Sometimes I feel that way. Lord, I just don't have anything else to give. You know, last night as I completed the work on this summer, I said, Lord, this has been one of those weeks in which I feel that I'm not connecting with you. I'm not connecting with because I'm tired. I'm drained. I don't have anything else to give. And the Lord reminded me and says, do you believe that I am with you? Do you believe that I'm going to take care of you? Are you going to put me first? Or are you going to whine and complain about your own circumstances? And you know what I had to do? I had to shut up. We're all valuable in the kingdom of God. And God's going to help us get through. You know, we can't be spiritually healthy if we're emotionally unhealthy. And uh, you can't be spiritually mature 
if you're emotionally immature. So regardless of how much uh, emotional and spiritual reserve you may have, listen, this crisis is beginning to wear us all down. It's beating away at us, friends. And listen, and it's going to take, you know how we're going to overcome it? We're going to, yeah, we're going to have to pay attention to science and we're going to have to pay attention to the health issues, but also we're going to have to lean on Jesus. We're going to have to lean on one another. We're going to have to do, listen, we're going to have to take control of our own destiny and we're going to have to trust the Lord that he's going to see us through. You know, I want to call your attention again to Romans chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. The message paraphrase gives us a clear message. Listen to what he says. He says, don't burn out. <laughs> don't burn out. Keep yourself fueled in flames. In other words, keep yourself fueled. We're going to talk about how to keep ourselves built up, fueled up. You know, uh, this past week I was coming from, uh, from, from Chapel Hill visiting Miss Perlane. And I, and I got uh, uh, to Red Springs. I says, well, I've got to get some gas. Well, I stopped. I mean, the, the line, it was, it was one of these stores where the gas was real cheap. And I says, well, I'm going to get in line here. Well, finally, it became my turn. And I was just uh, 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 pumping the gas, and I decided that I was going to do something else, and I uh, uh, put, put the pump on, on fuel full speed. And I turned my head about six or to eight seconds, and the guy behind me was blowing the horn. I says, what in the world is going on? He was, he was pointing at the car like that, and the gas was just flowing out. I says, what in heaven's name is going on here? And then I realized, friends, I had filled up my tank. And when you fill up your spiritual tank, for listen to this, when you fill up your spiritual tank, it's going to run over in the life of somebody else. And it's going to make a difference. And you're going to be able to impact someone else. So we need to keep our lives fueled up. And I'm going to talk about in just a few minutes uh, ways that I know it's about 15 minutes still, so give me at least ten, uh, five to ten more minutes, and we'll and we'll get through this. So what you know? So what we need to do in order to share what God has done for us, you know what we need to do? We need to begin to share grace, share grace with others as well as with ourselves. Sometimes we don't do that, do we? You know, I remember. I uh, read in a story some time back. He was a preacher. Preacher uh, uh, Fred Craddock tells this story of a church that he, he served. And he said uh, when he was there, it was a little small country church in Tennessee, in the hills of Tennessee. He says, you know, and, and you, know, you know exactly where this is at, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where, where the nuclear plant is at. It was right in that community. And when they were beginning to renovate and to bring and add more jobs, uh, he wanted to start reaching out to the community. And so the people just felt so uncomfortable about that. And said he went to church one evening, they were all gathered up and they began to talk about how not, not to reach out, but how not to reach the people. And, he, and somebody stood up and made a motion and he, and he said this. He says, in order to be a member of this church, you have to own land in the county. Now, he did everything that he possibly could to keep them from passing that motion. That motion passed. He left from that church. He went on about his life. But then he heard about that little church because it was the first church that he had ever served. So he and his wife decided that they wanted to go back. And when they saw the church in the distance, they saw lots of cars and motorcycles and, 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 and a whole bunch of people. He was wondering, what in the world is going on here? And you know, when he got there, they had a big sign in the front of the church. This is, you can buy barbecue, you can buy chicken, you can buy everything that you need for a good meal. It, that church had closed and it had become a restaurant. 
He walked inside of that church, and he made this, and he noticed this. The pews was pushed against the wall. The organ was pushed in the corner, and they were just having the biggest time. And you know what he made? He said, listen, he says, when I was here, this would have never happened. But he says, nonetheless, there are all kinds uh, of, of people here. He says, there are Parthians, there are Medes, there are uh, Edomites, there are dwellers of Mesopotamia. There are all of these people. Listen, and he says, and if, 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 if I had been here or if the church had continued, none of these people would have ever been a part of this church. You see, friends, when we start looking at ourselves and only taking care of ourselves, we forget about the people to whom God is calling us to take care of. That church closed. And you know what? It became a restaurant. Other people were using it. I'll tell you one thing. If we don't do what God has asked us to do, you know what? He'll raise up somebody else that will do it. Amen. Amen. We can get tired. We can get worn out. But we need to remember God is still with us. You know, he's going to take care of us. He's going to watch over us. But we've got to trust him. And we've got to believe in him. And when we do, he's going to bless our lives all together. Now, here's the second principle, and I'm coming to a close, and that is this. In order for us to have emotional strength and health, you know, we need to start refueling our souls. How do we do that? One of the most simplest and basic ways to refuel our souls is through the word of the Lord. Let me ask you, do you have a reading plan that you are following as a member of the church? Are you making sure you're reading the Bible every day? Is your soul being refueled so that you can find additional strength? Do you have a prayer partner? Are you asking somebody else to pray with you? If you're not, you need to do that. And if you do that, friends, you're going to grow in grace and you're going to grow. Your soul will be replenished. You will grow in faith. And you know what we need to do? We need to start doing it each and every day of our lives. You know, and if we do that, things will be different for us. Our lives will grow. We will be strengthened in the Lord. And then here's the final thing that I want to say to you and to all of us. If we don't read the scriptures on a daily basis, we're missing, missing one of the greatest opportunities that we have to heal our souls. Because the word of the Lord will help us to deal with with all of the brokenness that we have to deal with each and every day of our life. And so, are you ready? You ready to let the Lord heal you? Well, he wants to. Paul was saying to the Romans and that church in Rome, he says, listen, you have a gift. You're the body of Christ. Now, I, I hear something I'm going to ask you to do this week. I would like for each one of us this week to call at least three people. Somebody that you know that hasn't been come in the church, that you know that are kindly on the outskirts uh, of, of, of the church, somebody you haven't seen in church, and just let them know how much you miss them. Now, friends, if each one of us will do that, just three people, Friend, you know how many people we'll contact? We'll contact hundreds of people. And you know what you'll have an opportunity to do? You'll have an opportunity to share God's grace and God's love. Some of us can do that word in the places that we work. That's okay if you can do it. But at least get on the phone and say to somebody else, listen, I love you, we miss you, and is there anything I can pray with you about? Now, if you do that, God, friends, it's going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference in our own relationship, first and foremost. And secondly, it is going to bring honor 
to God's kingdom. Well, amen, friends. Uh, I haven't done all I'd like to do uh, in this sermon, but that's okay. We'll do it next time. And, and, and there's ways in which we can begin to do what the Lord has called us to do. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the hope that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ, and for the opportunity, Lord, to speak encouraging words to someone else who may be drawing on empty, may not be feeling up to par. They may be dealing with crisis in their lives. But our Father, you know about them. And you're saying to us that if you trust me and you place me at the center of your life, I'll take care of you. I'll watch over you. And so there's others who have never come to know you as their Lord and Savior. And so I'm praying this morning, praying that they will give you an opportunity to be Lord of their lives. And so our Father, you, you are the Lord of lords and you're King of kings and you love us. And you want to help us. And so it is through and by grace, our Father, that we are saved. Not of our own works, but of yours. And we're asking you this morning, if there's somebody sitting in a car or someone who will be listening to this at, a, at another time, that our Father, they would say, what is it that I need to do to be saved? And the Bible tells us, and if you... If you aren't saved, just pray this prayer and say, Dear God, I need to understand and feel your grace as I have never understood it. Dear God, I need to understand and feel your love. Thank you for caring for me. Dear God, I am asking you to show me your grace and your mercy in this time in my life. And Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins and come into my life so that I may be able to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, friend, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible reminds us and tells us that you've been saved. You've been saved. And I, before we uh, close this morning, I want to share with you a couple of prayer concerns, and we've got a number of them. Uh, first, I want to uh, just uh, read a card that comes from uh, Miss Lorna Harris and her family. And she says, to the Prospect Church and family and community, a, sin a sincere thank you for the prayers, visits, foods, uh, the monetary gifts, calls, and other expressions of love during the loss of my sister, Elfredo. Uh, it was uh, greatly appreciated, and may God richly bless all of you prayerfully, Lorna, Harris, and family. Now, uh, most of us remember and know uh, Mr. Eddie A. Jacobs. Uh, he and his uh, lovely wife, Adriana, uh, Jones, yeah, Eddie Jones. Uh, Eddie passed away uh, day before uh, yesterday. And uh, friends, if you go down Missouri Road and you look to the left, you'll see a black sign that says Jones Farms. Now, Eddie and his wife were members of our church. And friends, we need to be in prayer for them. And if you have an opportunity, uh, visit with them. The funeral is going to be uh, at 10 a.m. on Wednesday morning at Revels' Funeral Home uh, in Lumberton. And then the uh, burial will be at Statesville. I think that's the correct cemetery. Stewartsville. Okay, she said yeah. Stewartsville Cemetery in Maxton. And so uh, I just ask you to be thinking of those and praying for those. And also, Mr. Wade uh, lost his brother this past week, Mr. Delton Hunt. 
uh, we want to continue to keep Mr. Wade and his family uh, in our thoughts and our prayers as well. Uh, we've got a number of folks in, in the hospitals that we're praying for. Obviously, all of our cancer patients. Uh, Miss Fanny Jacobs is in the hospital in Charlotte. Uh, Miss Perlane Dial is at Chapel Hill. Hopefully, she'll be able to uh, be moved to a rehab in the very near future. And then uh, Miss Paula shared with me, Ivana Locklear, is that correct? Uh, is, as you know, ha who uh, was extremely ill, is now at home, and she's doing well. Friends, God answers prayer, amen? Amen, amen. he does. And, and we wanna thank uh, God for that as well. And let's continue to pray for God's discernment as well as uh, our, our time as we plan to how we are going to uh, begin our worship inside. We want to do that, but we've got to be discerning about it. And so we need to be praying for that as well. And then uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Monroe Chavis, uh, Brother uh, Ray's uh, father-in-law passed away this past week, and we want to keep these families and these individuals in our thoughts and in our prayers. And so friends, let's join together as we remember these individuals this morning. We give you thanks, eternal God, that we're able to be in this place of worship on this day. And Lord, and we know that you pay attention to the pleas of your people's hearts. And so we are praying for these individuals this morning that we have named. And the ones that we name with our family in the car or somebody that we name in our heart. Lord Jesus, we're praying for direction, not only uh, for us as a church, but for our nation. Lord, we need your direction. We are praying, our Father, that in all of these needs that you will speak, speak to these individual circumstances. And we trust you in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who've taught us all to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. We want to thank the ushers for going around to visit your vehicles and for your generous gift. Let us pray for the offertory hymn, our offertory. Generous God who always gives to each one of us the best. We thank you for this opportunity to share from our abundance and gratitude for all that you have done for us and given to us to return our tithes and gifts, that they may be used in service to others. Bless these gifts offered through the mission and ministry of our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As we prepare to go forth into the world, to love and serve the Lord and the people he calls us to. Let us sing this hymn of dedication. You can find it in your service order. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to Thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, 
to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer 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 blessed lord to thy precious bleeding side consecrate me now to thy service lord by the power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer 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 blessed lord to thy precious bleeding side oh the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne i spend when i kneel in prayer and with thee my god i commune as friend with friend draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer 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 blessed lord to thy precious bleeding side and there are depths of love that i cannot know till i cross that narrow sea and there are heights of joy that i may not reach till i rest in peace with thee draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer 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 blessed lord to thy precious bleeding side as we prepare to give the benediction they made a, a commitment to think about coming back in the church next month friends but i'll tell you and tell you now we need to go to pray and put it in god's hands and trust the lord go to praying if you'll do that go to blowing your horns More! Now pray like that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, be with us till we meet again. Amen. Amen.